Hello there folks, uh, this video is going to be going into the system designer uh, and I will also be talking you through making a map, I'll sort of make it and then in post I'll probably speed it up and talk over it uh, and I will also go into direct edit and quite what that mod is. Uh, just a quick pointer for direct edit, you just need to go into community mods to find it and if you go in available you'll find direct edit there alternatively you can search for direct edit and you'll find it there simply click install I've disabled it for the purposes of the first part of this video now when you want to make a planet one uh, bunch of things I was gonna say one thing but there's a, a number of things uh, to remember is firstly back up your systems. Um, the PA system designer is temperamental uh, at best and quite often people do complain of uh, losing uh, losing progress and or losing systems or whatever. So if you've made a load of progress and ch changes have saved successfully then what you can do is you can click on any of your systems or the system you're working on and click export and that'll save a file to your desktop. Now, to make a new system, simply go into the System Designer tab and New System. You will then have to wait for it to load. Depending on your computer, it can take some time. Next thing to do is you need to decide which biome you want to use and also what are you wanting to make with your map. Do you want to make a one versus one map? Do you want to make a 4v4 shared armies or 4v4 unshared armies? Or do you want to make a multiplayer planet system? And those will need those will determine quite what you need to do with regards to radius, with regards to spawns, but we'll get to that in due course. For purposes of this one, I'm gonna make a earth biome here, and I'm gonna make a 1v1 system. So I'm just gonna give it a right there. Right, so currently it's all a single colour because you have not previewed any of the terrain or anything and here you can see the radius the uh, the orbit and if you shift this around you can change uh, you know, the ellipse or, or whatever moving this around etc you can adjust this so that you can get all sorts of stuff there are limits to it as to determined by your mass uh, mass comes in when you want to make some objects orbit others or, or things like that I'm going to do quickly, however, is just remove this and paste a new one there. I don't tend to fiddle with the mass unless I make a multiple planet system, and even then, you don't really tend to need to because things tend to slot into place quite nicely. So, what do you do once you have your planet? You go edit planet there. Now you have a random planet. Preview terrain and gameplay is always useful to do because that shows you the metal site as well as the terrain. Now, all planets are generated by a seed, and there are all sorts of seeds here. Typically, when making a competitive map, you want to toggle symmetry. I'm going to toggle terrain and CSG, as well as metal spots and start spots for the purposes of this video. You don't need to uh, include metal and start spots in that, but it's usually better to do so for the best possible balance in your design. Radius determines, well, the radius of the sphere. So typical 1v1s, you ha tend to have it between 600 and 650. I'm going to put it around, no, let's, let's, let's give it a 625, best of both worlds. Height range determines the variation of the height. So if you imagine the radius as your norm, on that height and then the height range can be anywhere on a sine curve of determined whatever above or below that normal so if it's height range zero you're going to have as close to a flat surface as possible over as much of the sphere as possible equally if you have it at maximum that means you're going to have the maximum amount of variation both up and down and so you can see there we've now got a lot of hills and a lot of troughs and especially when uh, it's water you get deep water very very quickly Typically, I like to go with minimal height range for my competitive maps. 
It does, however, mean that water is much shallower. So do bear that in mind if you're making a naval map. Next thing to do is find a um, a seed that you want, but don't forget, each seed you can also change water coverage. So, for example, we can up that. It just changes how much of the planet is covered in water, and then equally water depth uh, determines how high up the water is from, uh, well, how high the water table is, shall we say. So, for example, with this water coverage at maximum, I'm going to reduce the water depth to, let's say, 26, and you'll see that the water is in roughly the same places, but isn't as uh, as high as it were and so where the water is approaching peeking through the surface as it were that's where you get lots of the uh, the sand and the beaches so you can kind of see that that's where the water is going to poke through now what I'm going to do is I don't really like this seed very much uh, all temperature does is again change a bit of the water and where the pole is and some of the biomes but that's not hugely relevant right I want to again I want to up the water coverage a bit here and see see how we can get this to go. And then again, it's just a case of finding uh, a seed that you want to work with. Don't worry about CSG or metal site placement at this time. Alright, so now that I've found a seed that I'm happy with, to happy to start making stuff with, uh, next thing to do is go into the gameplay tab, but just a quick note on symmetry. With the terrain and CSG, the terrain is just the biome and water coverage and stuff like that, whereas the CSG includes things like these rocks, these crevasses, uh, these sorts of things here. So you can see how there they are symmetrical. Equally, if you put uh, metal spots on symmetry, then you'll see north and south. Whenever you put on symmetry, it is always uh, the equator. So you don't tend to get it uh, longitudinally symmetrical. You tend to get it uh, latitude. Right. So, moving over to the gameplay tab here. Oh, don't forget to put on user starting planet. That will uh, actually mean that you can uh, put spawn points in here. So, somewhere hidden on here, somewhere there will be spawn points. Alright, gameplay mode now. Metal density, metal clusters. This does changing the uh, changing this will change the uh, placement of the metal if you're trying to make um, a competitive map my honest recommendation is not to use these sliders to put them down to minimal because that will mean you have less metal spot removing to do when you go into advanced edit so that's what I'm gonna do it puts them right in the spawn points you can see there where the spawn points have been put by this seed, but again, we'll get on to removing that with making these uh, changes. Here you can change how many armies. So, for example, if you're making it for a three-player free-for-all, for example, or a three-army game, you change that to three, and then as long as you have spawn points divisible by three, it'll give them equally, etc., etc. Um, there are some maps where, for example, you can put on, I don't know, 10 spawn points uh, and make it an 8 player free for all but that just means that t two people are going to get two spawn points to choose from whereas everyone else will only get one spawn point to choose from landing zones per army, auto landing zone size, fairly self explanatory uh, again you can change these in direct edit so it's not too much to worry about, I'm going to leave that all as it is, I don't tend to fiddle with them uh, unless, again, you want to make something that's, say, odd-numbered or whatever. So, it's time to go into Advanced Edit Mode. This is where the fun really begins when making your maps. So you can see here, CSG, Metal Spots, and Landing Zones. What I'm going to do is just walk you through quickly the basics, and then we'll get on to the time-lapse of building the planet. So, Landing Zones. The keys are as follows. To remove... It is J. To place, it is G. J, G, J. And if you have it symmetrical for landing zones, whenever you place or remove, it removes the symmetrical one as well. So you can see there how placing them gets close together. Equally, this is the same case scenario if you have um, 
when you're when you're editing metal spots. So now that we made it uh, to have the the fewest metal spot placements, uh, we don't have all that much to remove. Again, B is to remove, B for bike, and M for Michael is to place. And again, you'll see how they uh, come together like that. If you place metal spots close enough to together, they will only have one site there. So here, you'll probably only get one site out of uh, out of that there. Even though it looks like there are two icons when the uh, planet is constructed and rendered, etc, etc. Because you can't place metal sites that close to one another in terms of the metal extractors, then uh, you don't need to worry about multiple metal sites. I don't know what I was saying there. Basically, if they're too close, it's only going to give you one of them. Uh, finally, CSGs. There's a bunch of controls for this. First and foremost, um, looking at the UI that appears at the bottom here. So you've got all the different biomes. And on these, you'll have basic organic and structural. Organic and structural, don't forget, I'm using Titans here, so uh, this may not be an option for for all users. Organic and structural are your sort of tiered level things here, where you can place this, uh, these sort of platforms, if, if you like. Okay. This sort of light blue means that they are pathable. This dark blue means that they're just sort of basic, and if they are red, uh, it means they are non-pathable and or subtractive. I believe yellow would mean uh, a subtractive pathable brush, but uh, that's the sort of thing like uh, this structural here. Uh, that's also blue. Never mind. Ignore me about that yellow stuff, but there you go. So that's a subtractive brush, i.e. it's cutting away from the planet. Uh, ad additive brushes. I'll talk more about brushes when we get to direct edit. The stuff that adds to the planet. Rather self-explanatory there. Um, to place them, you obviously just click and place. To remove them, click delete once you've selected them. Be careful if uh, you lower them too far into the planet, you can no longer select them. In order to raise or lower uh, CSGs, I'll just uh, put a basic one up here just so that you can can see it better on the uh, on the ice biome there. It's W and S to raise and lower. So you can see there. Q and E to rotate, anti-clockwise and clockwise respectively. If you hold shift, they will rotate a bit faster. Uh, and A is increase the size, D is decrease the size. Equally, U is to increase the height. So you can kind of see there how it's getting a bit taller. I is to decrease the height. I believe O is kind of flatten and stretch. And P, I don't quite know what P does. It seems to have changed the color of some. Just so, uh, I, I don't know. It seems to have done something. I don't know what P does. But there you go. That's kind of the basics of CSG. The only other thing, of course, don't forget that we are using mirrored. So you can kind of see there how you've got a, a little ghost CSG. When you place them, uh, a ghost will be placed there. You cannot edit the ghost because the what change that you do to the one on the North Pole is reflected again in the mirror. This is if you use the CSG uh, mirror mode. If you don't use mirror, then it'll only place one CSG at a time rather than both. If, however, you have got it mirrored, and let's say you just want to put, I don't know, uh, a platform around the equator but you don't want two overlapping or whatever, what you do is you go control and slash and then you get just a single one. Again, the next time you place one it'll go back to your regular thing there. Okay, that's kind of the majority of our lesson on CSGs, metal sites, etc, etc. Now you get the joy of watching me make a one versus one map. So let's get down to it. Cue the music. Except there isn't going to be any music, so have, I don't know, have the some artsy music in the background while I do this. Just before we continue, I've just remembered, uh, in order to see what brushes look like, so for example, let's say we've got a, a, a I don't know, a, a desert subtractor brush. Like This looks really confusing, doesn't it? 
So what you do in order to see quite what this means is you put it down there and you go back to metal placement. And that basically puts those CSGs in place. You can kind of see there how we're just sort of reaching the water table at which point those are filling up with uh, with water. That's the same thing with craters. And actually that's a, quite a, a cheaty way of, say, making this stuff pathable because this stuff, naval units may have trouble uh, having pathing through these shallow waters here. So what you do is you put in a crater to make them deep and then you, you, you eliminate those, those pathing issues. But you can see now what it actually looks like in game, whereas when we placed it, it looked completely confusing, didn't it? So there's, uh, there's that to watch out for. Equally, what we'll do quickly before we move on is just save the system as, I don't know, let's think of calling it some form of pun in there. Right, saving systems. Now this is the interesting bit, and this is where most issues with any saving changes come in. Um, I personally am not 100% sure on what causes some issues or whatever. But when you are saving your system and you're leaving the system editor, you want to make sure that the button is greyed out, like that. So you've clicked that button, you've greyed out, don't click anything else, just click exit. Don't zoom out, don't zoom out into orbital mode because I've heard that that can sometimes cause issues. Just leave the zoom and all these buttons and everything as it is. So now you will see the monsoon or the planet, whatever you've named it, is now in my systems. Again, you can export it. Just having a quick look there. Exporting will, as I say, bring up a box where you can save the uh, the planet file to wherever. Equally, uh, if you want to import, then you can select a planet file if you're bringing it back in from a save. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Edit System, and we are going to now go into full time lapse mode as to uh, making this planet. Sometimes I might speak over the time lapse um, to, to just talk about a couple of gameplay elements of the of the map rather than the actual CSG or whatever elements in uh, in the first place. So here we go. Right, so what I'll do while this time lapse is in the background is occasionally just add a few comments about what I'm doing. On the whole though, um, I may just remain silent. Um, I'll point out a few things that I'm doing and why I'm doing them. So for instance here I'm um, joining up that body of water so that you can get naval units across there otherwise they'd have issues with the shallows. Equally here doing the same but with craters just uh, blocking out some of those shallows. Then it's on to just putting in the odd uh, bit of structure for expansion that can possibly be defended. Here I'm just putting a crossing over there and using the control and uh, backslash key so that I don't have two of them as I'm placing it near the equator. Removing a couple of uh, craters here as I'm editing in a new way of traversing that land. Just adding in some cosmetic changes here and there, just for uh, appearance. Some of them are cosmetic, but uh, some of them are also there to create um, expansions or choke points even. So for example here, putting in these bits so that I can have a little sheltered expansion just away, um, just away outside of the, uh, of the spawn there. Oh, 
There's a lot of trial and error, seeing what looks right, seeing what would imagine uh, would play correctly. Sometimes things don't initially work, so you have to change them up, and of course that is also where map testing comes in. Trying to delete the crater there, only to realise that uh, that's the, the ghost version, the mirrored ghost. Whereas the actual one is on the, uh, the south side of the map. In my competitive maps, I also like to have sort of areas around the equator that are more important to contest. So what I like to do is make little features like this where there's a whole bunch of metal around that uh, players can fight over. But again, that depends on what you want to get out of your maps. So How you want the players to have to play your maps. Do you want like players to not have to expand so early? Do you like them to have to fight to the death over expansions and have to keep uh, replenishing them? Or are you the sort of person that gives people 12,000 metal in their spawn and about 20,000 metal outside of their spawn? It's up to you. <laughs> Now here I'm starting to think about, oh, let's try and think about naval here, because T2 naval is quite strong, and I don't necessarily want it to be the go-to strat on this map. So what I'm thinking of doing here is adding in a few mountains just to protect against uh, Leviathan shots so that they don't have free reign over the base where it were a player to get T2 naval up. Here all I'm doing is creating an ah, inconvenience for the player, thinking about maybe adding in a crossover there, but finding that it doesn't really work and just deciding, you know what, let's just make it fully blocked off so that there's a little uh, decision there for the player on how to defend that side. A few bits of cosmetic stuff. Just spicing it up a little bit. At this point I'm starting to add in metal just so that I can have a bit of a better bearing on quite what I want the map to do and to be. I'm thinking about the uh, naval possibilities again here, because now I've effectively got two larger lakes where naval could be really powerful. In the meantime though, just adding in a bit more expansion. Repositioning the spawns. I decide here to rather than put the metal in the middle of the lake, I put it at the side so that it can be raidable from land and buildable from land as well. So that uh, you don't have to go full on naval in order to, uh, to get those. Trying to add decisions for the player to make. Do I want to go naval? Or do I want to try and risk getting air fabs? Or do I just want to play land? Again, these maps are also good for 2v2s and T2 naval is much more likely in 2v2 situations.
And here I actually decide, no, I don't want uh, T2 Naval to be able to get right into the base on this one. So I'm basically reducing the uh, impact of T2 Naval and or the locations that players may decide to go for it. As by blocking off the routes to the spawns there, players may decide not to bother going T2 Naval in that pond and instead re uh, reduce that T2 to only the other pond there. Yes, it's still in range of the base, but now there's only the one pond to contest for the T2 naval. I do still, however, give a little bit of base defence there in case people do start to do Leviathan blockades. They're still useful, but now they can't necessarily shoot directly into the base. And here just tidying up that uh, that crossing a little bit, although I make the craters just a smidgen too big. So uh, I go back and change that. Because I do like the idea of having a naval choke point there that players can fight over should they desire it. Again, I go back to craters because that just looks a bit ugly and ugh. That's a technical term, by the way. Ugh. Deciding whether or not to put a metal incentive in there, and deciding that the metal I have in the pond is kind of enough. Is the more metal you put into uh, into water, the more players are incentivized to go naval into that water to contest the uh, the metal. Going out there, just saving the changes to make sure that all the CSG edits have uh, saved. I'm going back out. Then it's a case of testing the map. I've tested it on 1v1 games and 2v2 games, and then I've gone back and made changes to metal placements. Because how you want the map to play doesn't necessarily mean that the map will play out that way. And so you have to tweak it depending on what you see players going for. Coming next, direct edit. This time around I'm just going to give you a brief overview of direct edit. I'm not going to go into every feature because a lot of direct edit is kind of just experimenting and that's part of the fun of it. Uh, I'm going to start with a disclaimer though. Um, just make sure that whenever you're using anything like direct edit that because it is, you know, it was never finished, it's still very much an alpha mod, uh, that you back up everything that uh, you're doing in terms of, you know, exporting systems etc just in case as I have heard reports that things can break. So, the first thing to notice about Direct Edit are the read and write buttons. The way that you make changes with Direct Edit is you read the current state of the planet and then you make your changes and then you write to the planet. And then you reread again and, you know. That's how you make the changes. You have to do the reading, edit the stuff that is read, then you write. If you make, if you read it, make changes, then you read it again, it's just going to go back to what was previously written rather than the changes that you've made, if you see what I'm saying. Right, so, we got a moon here, 700 radius. 
uh, as I've been tasked with making an eight player free for all map for uh, an upcoming event in the realm. So let's go into advanced edit and see what we can do. For the purposes of this, what I've done for symmetry is only terrain in CSG. I haven't done metal spots and start spots and you'll see why when we move on. So, first thing to do, let's go to advanced edit mode. Bing, bing, bing. There we go. Right. Fantastic. Now, once we've read stuff, you'll notice that there's no CSG here, but we can clearly see that there are CSG present on this planet. Why is that? That is because it says no custom CSG, default generation. So what you do is you go into CSG here. Let's say, I don't know, let's, let's add a little bit of a mountain in, shall we? Because you totally find mountains on moons. Then you go back to metal spots. This is important, you have to go back to metal spots out of CSG edit mode before you can really do stuff in direct edit with regards to CSGs. So now if I read it, you'll see there's all of the stuff there in the drop-down menu. And to get rid of it all, what we can do is we can go click, shift, click, all of that stuff, it's now all selected. Over here we've got a few buttons that we can do. Um, We've got some tools as well, I'll get onto those briefly. I'm just going to delete those quickly to show you the read and writing. So you can still see them all, yep, that's fine. But now there's only two here, right? If I read again, all, they'll all pop back up, so I'm not going to do that, just to save myself a bit of time, and I'm going to write. Bing! Let me go back to the planet here. And you'll notice everything's gone. Apart from the stuff that we left there, the two mountains. Notice the percentage there, that means that this is the mirrored version, that's what the percentage denotes. Equally, N means no features. Uh, if I were to, say, want to make a thing pathable, it comes up with a P and mergeable with an M. So, notice that I've now selected the non-mirrored one, which is this top one here. On the right side now, let's redraw your attention to the panel on the right. we have got properties. Uh, you've got the model name which you can edit if you want to directly. Haha, <laughs> direct, uh, anyway. Projection type, you've got none, bend, arch, longitude, longitude, pinch. Usually you use bend or longitude. Bend basically means that it follows the curvature of the planet. Uh, longitude means that the closer you get to the poles, the, like, it sort of stretches into the poles, as it were. Um, that's kind of the way that metal planets work, by default, which can be a bit frustrating um, using direct edit and metal planets and pathing and stuff. Metal planets are notoriously bad for pathing when uh, editing CSGs because of the trench shenanigans that they have that go on. Right. None basically means that they become flat uh, and all sorts. So here's a good chance to demonstrate what I was meaning with read and it going back. So notice how it says none when I read it and it comes back and it says bend. Okay. So that's just a demonstration of that. Um, you can change the rotation, which is, you know, the way it's facing. You can change the scale, which is its size. You can change the position on X, Y, Z and its height. Again, mirrored. Um, there's that. Pathable, mergeable, um, etc. Shift up, shift down is the order on the left panel. Um, that's important if you're, say, trying to carve bits out of the planet with craters. For example, if you have a crater at the bottom of a list, then it'll carve out stuff that is above it. If it's at the top of the list, then it does it first. So basically, if something is at the top of the list, that's what gets put in first. So let me demonstrate that for you quickly, actually. This is a good time to do that. Let's put in a crater. And show you quite what I mean by this, because it's a moon and craters work like that, right? So if I do this, Notice how the mirrored ones are, you know, non-selectable, etc. So let's go back to Metal Spots. And you'll notice how the crater is carving out that mountain, right? And it's carving out the bottom one as well. What if we don't want it to carve out the, uh, the mountain and you kind of want the mountain kind of floating or whatever? Then what you do is you read this quickly. Now you can see the craters there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this up to the top. And then I'm going to write. And now you'll see that you've got the mountain not affected by the crater because the crater is now being 
removed first, then the mountain put on, whereas before it was the mountain, then the crater takes away. If you get the logic that's behind it there. That's basically the logic of direct edit there. What if we want to make something symmetrical around the planet? So let's have a look. This is where we go into the tools tab here. There are a number of tools that you can use with these things. There's reflect through center, which uh, flips it onto the other side of the map. There's rotate about axis. The way this works is the axis you want to rotate it about, you have to put a one in and then you put zeros in the other ones that you don't want it rotated around and then you put your angle of course don't forget it's 360 so let's say I wanted to make um, I don't know three three spawns around the top equidistant from one another what I do is I select the mountain I select Z because that's the uh, north to south pole axis and 360 over 3 120. Notice there's apply and clone and apply. Apply basically does it to the one that you select. Clone and apply creates another one and applies it to that. So that's how I'm going to make three equidistant ones. If I just wanted to move this one around and adjust it a little bit, that's when you just use apply. Whereas clone and apply creates a new one and shifts it. So I want to make three, so let's go. One, two, now there's three in total. And now I write. And now I go back to the planet. Notice at first there's nothing around here and our mountain currently looks all kind of confused with itself, right? If we go to metal spots and to CSG edit mode, bingo, they have appeared. Now this is something to be wary of uh, with rotating things around the planet. It can change their height. Uh, so just be aware of that and that you might need to adjust the height of things when you've rotated them around. For some reason it doesn't like uh, keeping them at the, uh, at the right height. I suppose because there's a subtle height variation no matter how much of that there is. Right. So now let's go back to metal here so we can see our work that we've done. So we've got three there. Notice that I only did the non-mirrored ones. The mirrored ones are still very much just as they are. I'm leaving them alone for the time being. Despite mirroring uh, stuff, the CSG it own, in direct edit, it doesn't affect what you do in direct edit. It places things. It mirrors it when you place it in directly through CSG edit mode. Let's have a look at one of the other functions then. So let's select, I don't know, the second one. Um, invert can make things subtractive. I mean, I don't tend to use the other ones, really. Um, I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory, really. The only other one, as I say, is invert. So, oops, I forgot to read. There we go. Let's have a quick read of that. Invert. Apply. Ding. Right. This is going to be slightly interesting to see this, because I haven't inverted a mountain before, but there you go. It's how you get subtractive... Uh, ooh, thanks for the invite, Neon, but uh, no thanks. This is how you get subtractive meshes. Initially, it's going to look really buggy. Again, you need to go into CSG edit mode. And then you go back into metal spot mode. And you can kind of see there how you're kind of creating a bit of a chasm, really. Which is a pretty neat uh, effect there. I mean, again, sometimes it works better with some things than with other things. So, for example, the actual um, platforms, for example. Whereas here, you can kind of see in the mesh that things are kind of jagged. There are those jagged lines there with how it works. So if I just multiply the scale here a bit and put it back to metal spots, it's still going to have those jagged bits to a degree because of how the uh, CSG is actually designed. What I can do is I can raise it up a little bit, actually. That's probably why. It's just a little too low. So if I raise it... Oops. There you go. I wonder if that works. There you go. Nice, random custom crack. It still has a couple of glitches there, but again, you know, it's not designed to be subtractive like that, but you can get nice subtractive holes and cracks like that. Um, let's just go and create a, a platform quickly. I only want the one, so I'll just 
quickly uh, control and slash like I gave you before and now there's no mirrored one so it's just the single one there that's an interesting uh, way to create holes that one actually All right so let's read this now we see that it's appeared there invert it apply right ding ding let's zoom in Again, you'll see it's kind of a bit bleh, but you have to go to Metal Spots, CSG, and then back out to Metal Spots again, and you'll see your completed work. Things with this, though, word of warning, it can mess up with unit targeting. Um, Alpha has experimented with this sort of thing a lot more than I have in the past, and then he has found that uh, units that go inside of these things do tend to miss a lot, and by a lot I mean every shot, uh, because it, again, it's just not designed that way, and PA kind of gets semi-confused. But you can still make nice-looking maps with it if it's used if it's used sparingly. But uh, those are kind of your basic features of uh, of direct edit. What I'm going to do quickly though is just go back to metal here and spawn, so you can see the positions of the metal there, X, Y, and Z spawns equally again as you haven't put in any different spawns tools let's resize let's go for a new radius of I don't know 500 and apply oops read apply ding and write should be a slightly smaller moon now but the problem is with that as you can see you CSG do appear to be floating. Again, going back into CSG edit mode actually pushes that into the right place. And now uh, they're all in their respective positions for now a 500 radius rather than a 700 radius planet. They don't change the scale, however. They only change the uh, position. So do be aware of that. Going... Uh, Going into your direct edit extravaganza. Ooh, the glitch seems to have removed itself from there. Nice. Sweet. That actually looks pretty awesome now. I'm just going to change it back to 700 because that's what I want to be working with. Apply right. And before I do anything else, I'm going to do, show you a pretty nifty little tool here as well. Just in case you realise, oh, I don't want this biome. Oops, I just need the, uh... There we go. Nice 700 radius. Anyway, let's go back to read. Um, planets, 700 radius. Let's change the biome. Let's go for a lava planet. Why not? Let's see what happens. And right. Ding ding. So we now have a lava planet. But our CSG is still here. A nice little mountain pass still exists. And our inverted pathable CSG still exists. Awesome. Right. Pretty damn sexy if you ask me. And you can experiment with all sorts of stuff with direct edit. Like I said, you can rename the, um, the models to get... CSG that is hidden or not provided in the uh, CSG little browser thing that pops up in the UI at the bottom. For example, you can get Metal Planet Trenches, um, all, all sorts of stuff like that that are reasonably cool. You can get different types of craters, but anyway, experiment with that at your leisure. So those are pretty much the basics of Direct Edit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to probably have maybe maybe not have some sort of added commentary onto uh, me creating this eight player free for all i'm going to speed it up because it's going to be me kind of seeing what works and what doesn't so it is going to be very much sped up to see uh, how it all fits together so that's kind of your basic whistle stop tour of direct edit hope you enjoyed and have fun watching me create this uh, free for all map just before we do that though, here's just a 
little showcase of the sort of stuff you can do with direct edit. A lot of direct edit is about experimenting, having an idea and seeing if you can produce it. There's a lot of fun in that, actually. I don't know, it depends. Do you have the perseverance and the patience to be able to uh, to see it through? There's Quandry, where I had to rotate the map around three times. I did some silly stuff with the Metal Planet there to create that five-player free-for-all Turtle Fest map. Here's Boding, where I just demonstrate uh, the longitude and longitude pinch ways of those CSGs. Notice how they were sort of sliding into the poles. This is one created by Guest. We, uh, I just adapted it for a six-player free-for-all. It's part of his World of Tomorrow system. This is another one. Guest magic, as I like to call it. He was the author of the direct edit mod. Another guest magic. And now into the time lapse. So, in short, I've been tasked with making an 8 player freefall map for uh, an upcoming Realm event. Uh, by the time this video goes out, that event will have happened. I probably live streamed it, but I. Uh, wasn't able to show off the map uh, in advance so that um, people can practice on it. So what I'm doing here is establishing the spawns, giving them the right distance apart from one another. I'm trying to make it a bit interesting. I don't want to make it too turtly, but at the same time, you know, I want to provide less experienced players a, a defendable position. A little bit of cosmetics there with the mountains. Removing the excess metal here, just so that uh, when it comes to it I can um, put in metal and actually be able to do so without um, having metal that I can't touch. As you notice there on the bottom, I had to use direct edit to remove the metal that were inside the CSG. If metal is inside a CSG or floating above it, then you can't uh, edit it or remove it, for example. So um, instead of just deleting the mirrored CSG, I just go and uh, delete the metal spots directly through direct edit. If you're wondering how I knew that those were the ones, I looked at their positions and because they were all in the Southern Hemisphere, I just looked for the Z values that were all negative. Here I have a little bit of an experiment with those uh, subtractive mountains that uh, I decide doesn't quite work. So I spent a little bit of time fiddling around with that, hence the cut there. And some of these things, like uh, putting that CSG over there, you're thinking, what on earth are you doing? And that's just me considering, you know, is it perhaps a bit too far out? Is it at the right angle? I remove all the mirrored ones there because uh, I don't need them. We'll get to them uh, later. But what I'm doing here is I'm rotating the existing northern hemisphere ones around the planet, clone and apply, so that I have four on the north there, so now I have my four spawn zones. Notice though how I do go around and start adjusting the heights because, as I said, um, when you rotate and clone and apply them around the planets, the uh, the heights can change, so just be aware that that is a thing and so you might want to go and adjust them. I 
and don't need to be exactly equal, but uh, you know, I want it to look vaguely legit. And particularly the pathable ones, if they float too high or float too low, then there will be an imbalance there, perhaps. So I do now is just go and put metal around the sites. I haven't mirrored metal on this one because uh, the southern spawns are not going to be direct mirrors of the northern ones. They're actually going to be rotated around 45 degrees. So they will intersect the northern spawns. You'll see what I mean when we get to the end of this time lapse. Put the spawns in the right place there as well, save, close, come back in, just to make sure that uh, the changes have been saved. I do that occasionally and I'd encourage you to do the same just in case you get to the end of a massive long CSG editing section only to find that the changes haven't saved. So I suppose it's kind of saving you time there in the long run. There's me deleting all the, uh, the mirrored ones at the bottom. Actually in hindsight when I got to the end of this editing session, <laughs> it was a bad idea because it was all there and nice, but um, the issue that I'll have, um, I'll cover in a short while. Here I'm just uh, creating, I suppose, you can call it a distance break between the spawns, where I'm basically trying to force players to move a little further between the spawns so that it's not so easy to rush people with T2. So I'm artificially increasing the uh, the amount of time it's going to take you to get from one spawn to the other if you're attacking. I suppose I may as well talk about why I got rid of that southern one. Um, it was all mirrored, so I wouldn't be able to select it. So even if I did use it to rotate it around the planet, and then use, rotate all four around by 45 degrees, that's all well and good, but then they're all mirrored ones. So I can't adjust the height, and some of them were extremely high or extremely low or whatever. And so I wouldn't be able to adjust that. Um, so I figure in advance what I'll do is I'll just get rid of the mirrored ones. The thing is, if I were to make it unmirrored, which you can do in the direct edit thing, it does so by allowing you to select them, but it flips them 180 degrees. So for example, they'd all be pointing the other way, and instead of having to fuss around with rotating them each 180 degrees. Um, what I later decide to do is uh, reflect everything on the north through the centre of the planet. So if you imagine it um, projects each CSG through the centre to the opposite side via that uh, diameter line. Again, the only issue with that is that it's then kind of partially mirroring things, and so there's a little bit of adjusting to do even thereafter. So what you'll find towards the end of this video is that there's a lot of editing that I cut out because it's a lot of me just experimenting with how I can actually get about doing that stuff. So you can see here is just again me going around adjusting the height. And now that I have the north, it's just a case of figuring out, okay, well, Let's, let's get it on the south and rotate it around. And then it's a case of adding in all the metal and all the spawn points. And then doing a little biome experimentation, as you'll find. Here we go, so just cutting out the rest of it there, I decide to put it in an asteroid biome and have an asteroid belt there, which will eventually spawn asteroids. This is just uh, me watching eight AI go at each other, because that's totally interesting to watch, just to see how the spawns work, how far they are, the scaling and all that. Jazz. Quite interesting, and I'm pretty proud of the map. Um, it'll be in my map pack as of the... Um, publishing of this video, so feel free to go and play it. It's called Realm Battlegrounds. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it, folks. Uh, if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments. I know it's been a, a bit of a marathon video, but uh, it's, it's a system designer, and it's got a lot of fiddly bits. Anyway, until next time, folks, hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, leave them below. And subscribe for more PA on the way very soon, indeed.
Bye for now.